Hi and welcome to this week's how-to video. I'm Siobhan Walsh and this week we're on Michael and Norman Dunn's farm just outside Maynooth in County Gildare and we're looking at what's happening under the ground in this field of cover crops. And today Robbie Byrne is going to look at what's happening in the soil with us. It's February now today and we're after having snow earlier on. So if this ground was bare, it'd be that, that weather would be doing a lot of harm to the soil. So yeah. the cover crops are providing protection and protection um, what so they're soaking up water what are they doing yeah. there well basically they're doing a, a couple of things one is that the, the living fraction is helping to soak up some bit of water although in high rainfall events that's it's 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 never easy but it's also providing an, an above ground protection so when the raindrops are hitting coming down they, they're bouncing off plants and leaves you can see them yourselves there um, and that just avoids this sudden impact onto bare soil which displaces a lot of the finer silt particles of that soil and, and that's really the fertility that's maybe potentially going to end up in rivers or drains or water courses so uh, it's, yeah. it's fitting in from that angle as well. So people who don't understand maybe that brown clay that we see on the yeah. roads yeah. after a rain that's the really good soil yeah. that's being lost and yeah. the cover crops are protecting it. Yeah. So there's a, a really good mix in this field as well so I think Michael said we've different types of clover what else have we in this we field? We have two types of tillage radish and oilseed radish we have phacelia there's vetch and there's actually some linseed. I suppose a lot of people start off with just single species cover crops and then they try and maybe move towards more multi-species for, for various reasons. And there's still a lot of research to be done on cover crops in Ireland. There's a lot of research from abroad showing the benefits of them and the, uh, a lot of challenges as well. Early sowing being one of them and I think we can see that here. This was an early sown crop, uh, sown sometime towards the end of July. And even some Irish research has shown with some of the cover crops, uh, you know, a week in July is worth nearly two to three weeks in August and is worth a month in September. So I think some of the earlier research showed the biomass, uh, basically July sown cover crops were producing three times as much biomass as September sown cover crops. And they were actually crops for, for forage, for feeding animals. So again, dual purpose cover crops. So the roots will penetrate deeper, some plants will have deeper penetrating roots, other plants will have roots that uh, grow more widely in the top couple of inches. So like the two radishes will have a deeper tap root to penetrate to deal with compaction, whereas the phacelia has uh, a lovely, uh, you know, a very thick mat of, of small fine root hairs that really work that top three, four, five inches and very good feeders of soil biology and encouragement to soil biology. And the linseed is probably one of the most pro mycorrhizal plants that, that we can probably grow in this country. So again, he's looking at that as, as a means of just introducing a bit of rotation into that and biodiversity in the below ground root exudates coming from the plants. Right, you brought the spade, Robbie, so we'll go dig a few holes and see what they're doing. Right, sure, dig down there, Robbie. So we're just gonna have a look at the difference between where there is a cover crop and where there's no cover crop. Yeah. So again, we can see that there, and the colour, yeah. the amount of roots in it, so it's quite grey, quite wet, quite cold, yeah. and I'll just find a, a bit here. And I'll put them side by side. So again, it's just coming down from a, one of the radishes. We can see it's far more friable. Yeah, so the roots are coming open. out and the clay is yeah. around. Yeah, it's more open. It's yeah. it's it's actually doing the physical work of keeping the soil active, keep feeding the photosynthesis down there. So there's, some people call it the liquid carbon pathway. So. The clay it's, it's is the, a lot more crumbly too, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like so despite the day and the, the wet feet, yeah. like, you can really see the difference yeah. in the two of them. So There's a lot of cover here now and it's February and Michael's going to sow a crop in it. So what's our Michael or Norman, what are they going to do before they plant? And again, there's a number of options open to any growers. Michael has already rolled some cover crops in that he in when he knew there was a couple of heavy frosts coming and he got a very good result from that this year that's not always guaranteed and other cover crops in the past he's used just burn desiccate them with glyphosate and yeah. and a, a quick burn down so again the traditional methods and maybe some of the more interactive methods to, you know looking at we say non-chemical control but yeah. um he's 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 
I suppose constantly trying to see which is the best way and at the moment as long as life is it is registered it's, it's the quickest way to desiccate the cover crops. So Robbie we've learned an awful lot just from digging holes and seeing what's going on in the soil you call it pooching yeah um, so maybe that's the, the biggest thing to take away from this video go out look at your cover crops and dig down a hole the best investment you can make on your farm maybe is a spade.